I'm Sophia A. Jackson, and I'm the editor and founder of Aphrodisiac Theatre News. And today I'm joined by... Darren Raymond, and I'm the artistic director of Intermission Youth, which is a, a, an organisation that works primarily through the arts with young people from all over London. And we're celebrating 15 years this year, so very happy about that. Thank you. Which leads me on to my first question. Um, and first of all, thank you for being part of our Artistic Director series. Um, congratulations. This, As you just said, this year marks 15 years of Intermission Year Theatre. Could you, please could you tell us some highlights? Oh, there's been a lot over 15 years, man. Um, I suppose like most of the highlights are seeing young people change their lives uh, because we work pre predominantly with young people from, you know, the, the the African and Caribbean diaspora, those who are lacking opportunities, uh, those who are not quite sure about the path they want to take in life. Um, and we work through the arts, but it's about empowering young people. And there's been so many over the years that have, you know, come on the program and really just found themselves in terms of their calling, their purpose in life and gone on and done amazing things. And that's, you know, young people going on and working professionally in, in the industry. You know, we've got young people that are, you know, working on our stages um, and, and you're seeing them on your screens as well. Mm -hmm. um, Tosh Cole, who's a, a young, you know, actor from the UK doing big things. And then there's others that go back into education. We've got a young person who came on the programme, you know, struggling in education and now is ahead of year oh, in the school fantastic. in South London. So, you know, yeah. the, the highlights, are, there's so many. Um, so it'd be hard for me to just pick one or one or two out. But yeah, there's, there's lots. That's fair enough. And personally, as artistic director, what has been your input into the success oh. of the last 15 years? Well, you know, we've got an amazing team, but the organisation was co-founded, you know, 15 years ago, and it was a response to what young people were uh, confronting in, in, in the city of London. Mm. And I suppose my input was the was about a desire to make a change in the life of young people. Okay. Because when I grew up, you know, I had a lot of run-ins that weren't really productive for my future, unhelpful for what, I knew I was capable of doing, but I didn't have that support around me, that guidance, that mentorship, the opportunities. Um, and then when I did eventually kind of discover what I wanted to do and started making the right choices, I was just passionate about setting up something that gave young people, you know, a space and also a platform to be able to just develop who they are, who they really are. And so I would say my biggest input was just fighting to get something set up like Intermission to support young people and then obviously the creative side of things and you know program planning and just trying to work out you know what it is that's going to engage young people what's going to kind of attract public to the work that we're doing to support it as well um is is yeah is probably my biggest input which leads me on to um what would you say what is the ethos of intermission youth theater um I would say the ethos is, you know, about transformation, about trying to just be there for each other. Um, it's about relationships and community as well, because uh, I think we're lacking a lot of that in in our society today. When I grew up, you could it was hard to kind of do things about the next door neighbour going and talking to your yeah. mum. You know what I mean? And saying yeah. you know, some, somebody just kind of trying to keep you in check. Yeah. I think now with social media and just the acceleration of technology and you know and, and different kind of ideals and attitudes in life we're missing that or, or those ingredients are not is not as yeah. strong as they used to be so our ethos is you know just about instilling values those core values in young people uh, respect resilience um, love and care tolerance as well because there's so many differences in our world you know and we're we're learning each day as a, a, as a society about inclusiveness and do you know what I mean? And and and, and how to kind of in, incorporate individualism in mm. uh, um in a community or or in you know in a in the bigger picture. And I think that takes a lot of tolerance and understanding. Yeah. Um so one of our sayings at Intermission is turn judgment into curiosity. Okay. Uh, which which we really love. Yeah, because I love that. Kind of diffuse a lot of conflict. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it makes you think about um things from someone else's perspective forces you to yeah. doesn't it yeah yeah absolutely definitely 
And what would you say, what are the challenges of being an artistic director? Funding? Oh, yeah. That's what everyone <laughs> says first. first. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's a big challenge. Yeah. And I've been an artistic director of because a lot some people, I mean, intermission has been doing some good things for 15 years. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I wonder if kind of like I've been in the industry a long time and been, you know, championing the work of young people for a long time. And I work, you know, I do freelance work as well and work with professional actors and stuff like that. Okay. But I, I'm not sure if people, if the industry see me as an artistic director. Right. And okay. this is a challenge because the work is predominantly with young people. I think there's an attitude that, you know, youth work is kind of amateur dramatic or, you know, right. they're training or just until they kind of, until they get to where they want to get to and they then they're doing something serious, which we can recognise. Okay. Um, I'm not saying that's true, but sometimes I get that impression, um, yeah. you know, um, and I think that's a challenge, mm. you know, kind of building this organisation to be respected for the excellence that it produces because we produce excellence you know, in the work that we do artistically. And if you look at our legacy, you know, from our reviews to kind yeah. of features around the work and all that, it's, it's putting young people on a, you know, in a in a light alongside professionals and we work in, in, a, in a really professional manner. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one of the challenges. Obviously, funding is another challenge. Being a, a small to medium-sized charity, as an artistic director, I don't have that luxury that you know maybe some artist directors have in in big theaters reputable theaters producing houses mm -hmm. um because you're having to kind of juggle a lot of different things um it's, so i'm not just an artistic director this year we're, we're doing two productions i'm producing them yeah you know sometimes i'm having to go and clean out the toilets at the end of the day <laughs> okay. you, know so, you know so there's there's some of the challenges there as well yeah um, and I think programming as well, I find programming sometimes a challenge because we're not a producing house mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we're kind of a hybrid from a youth organisation and a theatre company. And so the challenge is kind of creating a programme that keeps an audience engaged, mm -hmm. um, you know, f uh, and, and d develops a kind of a database or a network of people that know the work, support the work, will come and see the work. And so because we don't produce a lot of theatre throughout the year, our main show is the youth theatre um, one at the end of the year. Right. But okay. we try to do kind of little bits here and there. Yeah. It's hard to reach an audience when we're going, you know, it's always like we're starting again. So every year. Yeah. 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 So we're building on that. Um, and that's a challenge as well. But I've got an amazing team. We're a small team, but they're an amazing team, you know, and, and they uh, um, support me in the challenges, you know, that that I face or we face. So I must say thank you to them as well. And what do you enjoy about being an artistic director? Well, I'm going to contradict myself now because I enjoy all the challenges. <laughs> not not cleaning out the toilets though, surely. Not cleaning <laughs> out the toilets. <laughs> I, I enjoy that process of, of yeah. creativity, of discovery. You know, I love sitting in a room and not knowing what the answer is. You know, I think there's there's magic in the unknown and, and coming together as, a, you know, with creatives, particularly young people and just listening to their, you know, to their thoughts, their opinions, their views. I love that. I love kind of listening and putting an air and, into what's happening in society, the issues, you know, things that we're struggling with as as people and yeah. then finding the art in that, finding how we can kind of, at art, as artists, respond to that and create something that is going to challenge, provoke, mm -hmm. entertain, you know, and move us into into a, into a some into a better place. I mean, I, I really enjoy that. I enjoy, I enjoy um, challenging the status quo. So I enjoy, you know, really going up against the institution to change them. It's mm -hmm. frustrating, but I, I enjoy it because I know that, you know, that's that's my calling. I know that's my, my purpose in life is to kind of break down the barriers and, you know, give access to to us mm -hmm. that have restricted access for, for so many years. Um, and it's enjoyable kind of just knowing that I'm in a position where, you know, I can get people to listen and, and, and insight change, even if it's small, you know, um, and that's something that I, I enjoy and I'm proud of that my organisation is set up to do. That's yeah. lovely. Um, and I guess by default, you end up being a mentor to the young people. But have you got your own mentors or peers within the industry that have supported you over the years? 
yeah, yeah, I've got a lot. I'm lucky, man. I was just on the phone to my mentor yesterday, one of them. Um, and he was the one that really first ignited all this drama stuff. Because I was never into drama as a youth at okay. all not, I didn't know that I was you know into the arts it was just by accident I got into it to be honest with you mm-hmm. um but yeah I was chatting to my mentor and he was saying yo man he's got this deep res- resonant voice and he's like I'm so proud of you man <laughs> I'm like no I respect Lee you get me I appreciate it man if it worked for you and he's like you know so we always check in and those people are really important to me he's not the only one I've got you know Rob Gillian and his wife Janine who co-founded Intermission Youth as well okay they're like I get parents and mentors to me and then uh Mark Rylance who is a trustee yeah. of our organization mm-hmm. you know that's another a, a massive mentor to me and these these are all accessible as well you know like I can call them they check in on me nice. we've got great relationships so yeah and I think mentors are important yeah. you know which is why that's such a main component of the work that we do because um yeah, it's just it's just nice to have people around you that can respond that maybe have been in a situation that you're experiencing, you know, can give you just just shed some some hope or positivity in, in sometimes yeah. the dark. Yeah. Yeah. Always and, I and also celebrate your victories with you as well. Yeah, that's really good. And I suppose because you are supporting so many people, it's good that you also have your own support system. I think that's important. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hundred percent. And what does a typical day look like as an artistic director slash producer? Are you normally up at... No typical days. (laughs) (laughs) Sophia, that don't exist, boy. Oh, right. (laughs) Listen, in the arts, man, it's just, it's what it is, isn't it? Sometimes you wake, it's not not, not a nine to five. I don't think I've ever sat in an office from nine to five and the day is gone. That's nice. So, yeah. yeah, it's funny, yeah. you know, especially with young people as well, because you can be in the office trying to get something done and you've got a deadline, boom, the door burst open. Yo, D, I need this. <laughs> I'm like, yo, bro, come on, man. I'm just trying to sort this out. No, but this, no, but... And, you know, and then all of a sudden you're out of the office, you're walking down the road to help them do, do with something or, you know, and or self-taping or, you know, they might come in with an issue, a problem that they need support with. Um, and then, you know, we've got so many partners that we get opportunities all the time. People kind of contacting us. Can you do this? And we're like... No, we can't, but let's try and <laughs> happen, you know. So you're always on your toes, always constantly. The doors are revolving door, people are in and out. You know, from 2008, we've got graduates who are in their 30s now nice. with children. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I'm talking about relationship, community. I'm a godfather. I've been to weddings, you know what I'm saying, for, for young people that I've taught and ceremonies and graduations. All That's these amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's um a day at intermission is a, is we should do a video. We should do a film on that. A day. I think you know we I mean? should. Like, a day at intermission. It's be interesting to kind of look back and see what what happens in a day because I couldn't tell you. Yeah, t- twenty four <laughs> hours behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, it sounds like you. This is um something that's very rewarding for you. So is this something that you think you'll just basically just do forever, or have you got your eyes on other things? I want to be careful what I say because every time well, I talk yeah. about it, the young people, oh, dear, you're not leaving, you're not leaving. But you know what? It's it's what you were saying earlier. You know, having mentors is really important because in a job like this, is there's a lot of giving. Yeah. And, and it, it's important that you're kind of feeding your own creativity, your own soul, yeah. for, for to be able to sustain the work. Fifteen years is a long time. That's fifteen years for the youth work, but the organisation is actually eighteen years old because it right, started okay. a better company. So in two years, I've either done 20 years in the job. And I think I am, you know, looking at a succession kind of plan. I think that's really important for the growth and, you know, and just for the legacy of the work. Yeah. Um, and and so we're looking at kind of graduates coming in and leading more in what we're doing as well, which means it's been happening in the last two years. But I am interested in, you know, like directing for screen, uh, mm-hmm. kind okay. of helping my writing more as well. So I do see a future where kind of somebody else is leading the work at intermission um and maybe i'm sitting on a board or kind of advising yeah. consulting in some way but yeah there is there is things that kind of i've got i've got my time that i need to kind of yeah <laughs> i've got yeah. i've got, I've got gems that i'm sitting on that that i need to just kind of give a little bit of attention to yeah um i've got another voice that i want to share with the industry yeah, that's fair. Um, all right, let's talk about your double residency at the Ar- Arcola Theatre, Taming Who and Excluded. How are they different to your typical Shakespeare production? 
well, for one, there's a the, the cast is predominantly African and Caribbean. Um, <laughs> and we still ain't seen enough of that on our stage in classical. No, work. no. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's it's the work is devised by by the group, so it's kind of divisive work by young people. Um, so it's very collaborative in how it comes together. It merges Shakespeare's uh, um, words mm-hmm. with 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 street or contemporary language, so it blends it into two. And it's set in in modern day, and it kind of lifts a lid on on youth culture in London. Um, it's mad. You ain't. I don't think anybody's seen. If you've seen an intermission youth production, then you'll understand. If you ain't. You're going to be seeing something that you've never seen before in your life when it comes to classical text, but we just rip it to shreds, <laughs> kind of put all all of us in there, and then yeah. we sum it up together because we, you know, we like to kind of pay homage and respect to the work that where it came from, which is Shakespeare, you know, and he, and and he was a, an amazing writer, um, and it's just yeah, it's just fireworks, man. It's just like you see it, and just like whoa, for the first five minutes, you're going to be like, oh, what's this? It takes the time to acclimatise it, but once you get into it, man, it's 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 mad. It's it's a roller coaster. So I imagine that um your plays are a safe space then, because if it's a youth theatre, then I does that mean that the cast are bringing their young people friends along as well, um, so that it's yeah. a, it's an inclusive space. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I think we do a lot for audience development uh, in the work that we do. Um, because since I've been doing it, the audiences that come through, you're not getting first time theatre goers. Yeah. You know, people, you know, never been to the theatre before. But because, you know, it's their community and, and their peers that are in it, they're coming along. And so that's just introducing a new world to them. And then we were set up when we first started the, the organization, we were founded in Knightsbridge. Um which yeah. is an area. Yeah, in in a in St. Saviour's Church. Church, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. right, yeah. Behind Harrods, that little corner store. Yeah. Um you know, and so there's a lot of wealthy people there. So I think we, that's we, when I went. I think that it's a long time since I've seen a show, and I think it was oh, okay. it was it was when you were there. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. That was that was our home for for a long time, and so we had a lot of wealthy people coming to our shows. So okay. you know, upper class, middle class, echelons of life, and you know, mayors and politic, um, sorry, MPs and stuff like that, people in government and philanthropists so they're sitting alongside first time theatre goers young people that you know are not from that world you know what I'm saying and when they yeah. and it's a, really interesting to see that dynamic in a theatre space mm-hmm. um, and when the work is for us by us and then these people are coming in I think it does it's a twofold thing like it, like we were saying earlier it kind of breaks down a bit of ignorance yeah you know, it kind of builds understanding um, but I think it also helps these people to come in and know what it feels like to feel excluded as well. Um, and, and that's not an intentional thing. And we don't make them feel excluded. And I hope they don't, actually. Yeah. Um, they come into a space and they're like, OK, you know, it, maybe they go away and, and, and are more kind of inclined to be inclusive and and just kind of be aware and more conscious of their privilege. Yeah. Um, and those things are kind of in in the in the subtext and and subconsciously in what we're doing in our work. Yeah. Thank you. And finally, um, why should um, why should we come and see Taming Who and excluded? Because it's dope theatre, man. Like if you want entertainment, if you want to laugh, if you want to be challenged, if you want to see your young people, you know, shining excellently then excluded and taming who are the production sphere. I'll just give you a quick, quick, quick synopsis of the both plays. So Taming yeah. Who is is um inspired by Taming of the Shrew, which is a Shakespeare yeah. play. You know it, you know it. If you don't, that doesn't matter. Come and see it. It's gonna feel like a new play. And it tackles misogyny and relationships. And the premise is really funny. It's about this kid called young man called Petruccio, whose um parents, his mum, sorry, is beckoning back home to Nigeria because she's worried that you know, he's in London and it's not the life for him. And, you know, with everything going on, she just wants him back home. Yeah. And that culture, if you find a wife, you leave your mother and you cling to the woman that you love. So <laughs> he comes up with the right idea to tell his mum, married. And she's like, oh, she's very, you know, she's overjoyed. She can't believe that he's married. And so she says to him, wonderful, you can stay in London. And he's overjoyed. He's like, yes, you know. And she said, I'll be there in three days to meet her. So... 
he has three days to find a wife. <laughs> he's running around campus trying to convince someone to marry him. And that's the premise of the play. So it's a comedy, but there's a lot of kind of issues that it yeah. kind of tackles underneath that while we laugh. And then excluded is a it's a different it's a different kind of feeling, different kind of play. That's about um uh, uh, um they take Shakespearean characters, iconic characters from some of Shakespeare's plays. So I'll mention some that you might know, like Romeo from Romeo and Juliet in it. You've got Macbeth in it. Um, you've got uh, Hamlet in there. And they're all in class. So they're, they're young kids and they're studying for their GCSEs. But they've got all these issues, um, you know, that they're dealing with. Yeah. So, you know, Romeo's in love, but he can't be with a girl because she's from the ops. Um, Hamlet's <laughs> good because his dad, her dad's just died. You know, and okay. this teacher's trying to get them through their GCSEs. Okay. But really, we're kind of ignoring or saying, well, what about the well-being of our young people? Which is a conversation that we're having a lot in education because we feel mm-hmm. like education is failing our young people. So it's a wonderful mirror just into that world of, of the education system. Thank you. Um, yeah. That's it. We're done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wicked, man. Well, thank you. I really enjoyed talking to you. Thank um, you. Like, So did I. It was fun. It's good to yeah, find out you. more about intermission and fantastic work that you're doing. And also the amazing work that you're doing. I've been <laughs> 15 years old, but I think I've... How long has that been yeah, we're, the, we're the same age. I was going to say, because I, I, I remember years. when you first born, so look at that. We're twins. <laughs> we, twins. <laughs> we should have a party. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Next play, Double Trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Have a good yeah. day. Take care. Uh, you too, Sophia. Thank you. Take Thank care. You. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.